Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, so today I got what I hope is gonna be a quick project to do over here with my Lucas Horizontal Boring Mills. You guys know and follow the channel for a while. You've been, I've been restoring this machine and uh, doing a lot of things. I've really about got it finished, but there was a little adjustment I wanna to try to make on it. And I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride because I really just don't know what I'm gonna get into on this. As I've been using this machine, um, this it's got a rapid traverse that will move the tables and move the head up and down and i've noticed that when i move this head up and down uh, particularly now that i have the tailstock on it that it seems to go up just fine but when it's coming down the rapid is just slipping it's not really grabbing it's not pulling it it's just about doing it but it's just not quite doing it uh, as it needs to be um, I've got a, on my vintagemachinery.org website, we've got a manual for a Lucas Model 41 horizontal boring mill, which is actually a little bit newer than this one. This is a Model 31, uh, but it's a very similar machine. They, they made a few adjustments and few changes to it. But uh, I looked in there and basically there is a clutch inside of this that a friction clutch that engages whenever you engage the uh, that the the feeds up here using these these knobs all these uh, will adjust the different um, feed mechanisms but whenever you engage those uh, there's a friction joint in there that will spin and, and if it gets into a bind it's supposed to actually spin and not break a gear or something it's kind of the idea and uh, I think what I need to do is just tighten it up. But I, what I really want to do is take it apart and look at it. Uh, according to the manual that I had for the Model 31, it said that there were leather washers that were in there that basically squeezed together. You tighten a nut up and you squeeze them together. And that's what creates the friction. On newer models, it said it actually had, yeah, love this, asbestos uh, washers in it. This being an older model, I'm, I'm hoping that it has leather, not asbestos, but if it does, we'll deal with it. But I wanna take a look at them and examine and see if we need to put new washers in there. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm getting into here, but we're gonna bring you along. So let's, uh, let's come over here. First off, let me just kind of fire this machine up. Uh, make sure my phase converter's on. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna engage the uh, power on it. And uh, so I'm going to have it go up. You can see the, actually it's going down. You can see it's, it moved just a little bit. And uh, the, uh, it won't go any farther. If I go in the other direction, this is going up. The head does move up okay, but it gets in a little bit of a bind coming down. And it's just enough that that washer is, is uh, slipping down there. So that's kind of my, my, what I'm trying to fix here. My other feeds, uh, the table movements and stuff, they seem to be working fine. But my concern is, is when we get a load on it, they may slip as well. We don't want to get in that situation. Let's get in here and see what we can do. I'm over here on the front of the machine, and this is the screw, the, our bolt nut, whatever you want to call it, that we use to adjust this washer. But what I want to do is pull it all out to inspect the washers and see if we need to make new ones. It's going to be a lot easier to do this if I can remove this handle. There is a pin here. I'm hoping that I can get this out. Uh, let's see, I'm going to move this one kind of out of the way. I'm going to move this one forward a little bit. And... This uh, hopefully will knock right out. I'm gonna get a, let me get a shorter punch. That one's a little bit too long. Let's see what we can do here. Well, it helps if you drive these tapered pins out in the right direction. I went over and got my calipers and measured both sides. I swear it looked like the, the, this side was the bigger side, but it's not. The back side's the bigger side. So uh, I'd already loosened it up. It still was in there tight, but we got that one out. 
and uh, hopefully now this will uh, slide off of that shaft. There we go. Now we've got good access to this whole mechanism here. There's a lot of paint on these threads. So I'm just going to take a wire wheel and just kind of clean this up. And take my wrench. There we go. This whole plate should kind of come off. There we go. All right, so we've got this out now, and there is a um, gear in there that engages into another gear. And what we've got is there's this spacer that uh, you can adjust in and out, and this is the uh, friction piece that's in between it. Now, again, according to the manual, it said leather or asbestos. I'm not sure what this material is. I don't believe it's asbestos. It looks just more like a, almost like a piece of plastic or Bakelite or something like that. Uh, but it appears to be in good shape, which is the main thing I wanted to inspect. I wanted to make sure if these were leather washers that, you know, there wasn't, they had not all deteriorated and gone. Um, so I'm happy with that. While I got this apart, I'm gonna clean this piece up Again, this is just a piece that kind of presses in and out, and uh, we'll put this back together. Well, I think we are ready to put all this back together. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to put the... Um, clutch disc back in, friction plate, there was a key in here, we'll uh, slide that back in. I did clean this up, I will note that there's these two holes, and I was under the impression that, that was where you put oil in this, but those are just spanner holes to put a spanner wrench on to take it off, so um, anyway, I cleaned this up, cleaned off all the old paint, uh, basically just got it back down to bare metal. Let's see. Well. All right, we're gonna try this again. And I think I got it that time. Had a couple of washers on there. And then had the uh, nut here. Now let's see if we can get our handle back on here. See, this is going to be a challenge. There's a little bit of play in this handle. And it needs to be all the way out for it to be tight. So let me think about how I'm going to do this. I wonder if that's a threaded hole in the end that I can put a little screw in to pull that out. Give me just a second here. 
when I first saw that hole, I thought it was a center hole, but then I got looking at it and it wasn't in the center. I said, you know what? I bet they tapped a hole in there and they did quarter inch hole. And that should give me something to kind of hang on to here as I'm pushing this thing in. All right, let's uh, see if we can tap that on there now. that back in there and I believe that that is installed we're gonna give it a try all right we're gonna give this thing a try fire up Still need to tighten it up a little bit more. And we're driving both ends. Let's come down with it now. That was where, really where I was having my problems. And we're coming down. Good deal. I think we have success. So honestly, guys, I went to a lot of trouble here when I could have just tightened that thing up, but because of the unknown condition, this being an old machine, and me trying to get it right, and uh, I saw that where it had mentioned the leather washers, and I was like, you know, I bet that uh, friction uh, washer in there was just worn out. Looks like someone had already been in there and put in some proper clutch material, so I think we're good to go. Uh, like I said, I probably went to a lot more effort than I needed to in this particular case, but now I have peace of mind knowing that this thing is right and we do have it adjusted where uh, it's gonna work properly. And uh, if we run into a situation down the road where it starts slipping again, I know now all we gotta do is tighten up that friction nut and uh, we should be back in business. So uh, that's gonna help out a bunch. So anyway, with that, uh, I think that's gonna be a wrap on this video. Uh, hopefully somebody out there has one of these Lucas Mills and might not know how to adjust that and now you've seen the process so you can uh, take care of that on your own if you need to uh, but with that we're going to sign off as always thank you guys for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thumbs up comments greatly appreciated helps a lot with the youtube algorithms uh helping my channel get discovered by other people uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And as always, a big, huge thank you to the supporters of the site through Patreon, PayPal, etc., who help support financially around here. We could not do everything we do uh, making these videos without your help. And guys, with that, we are going to sign off. We will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.